Hello, Geo Geosystem students. This is Dr. Sturm, and I wanted to go over the two main types of volcanoes information chart um, for this assignment today. So there are two main types of volcanoes on Earth. Um, there's really a continuum, but these are kind of two ends of that continuum. Stratovolcanoes, also known as composite volcanoes, and then shield volcanoes. And here is a diagram of each one. And notice that stratovolcanoes are steeper. They're layered with different eruptions. Um, shield volcanoes are flatter, much, much, much larger in scale, actually, although that's not shown on this picture, um, with continue, more continuous eruptions. We're going to talk about the differences between the two. If, you're, um, if you'd like to read more about it, here is a description in writing. Shield volcanoes are the most common volcanoes on Earth as they're found along the extensive mid-ocean ridge system that um, creates all of the ocean crust on Earth. In terms of plate tectonic setting, stratovolcanoes are found above subduction zones at convergent plate boundaries, whereas shield volcanoes are formed at divergent plate boundaries or spreading centers. Shield volcanoes are often are also found at hot spots, which of course is not related to plate tectonics um, because that vulcan volcanic source is from deep in the mantle and not related to the plates. As far as example location goes, uh, Mount St. Helens in Washington State, Mount Mayon in the Philippines are both um, excellent examples of stratovolcanoes. Notice their steep sides. Um, whereas mid-Atlantic, mid-ocean ridge volcanism on the Atlantic Ocean, here's a picture from the Atlantic Ocean, the bottom of it at the mid-ocean ridge, as well as Hawaii as the hotspot example for shield volcanoes. In terms of morphology, stratovolcanoes have the steep sides, whereas shield volcanoes are much smoother and flatter. And magma composition is different for each as well. So because the source of the magma in a subduction zone setting is the upper mantle or lower crust, which is a mafic to intermediate in composition, therefore the magmas that come out of that source that melts are intermediate to felsic in composition, or about 60 to 70 percent silica in a stratovolcano. As opposed to in a shield volcano, the source of the magma is consistently ultramafic in composition. It's the mantle. So the melts that come out of it are mafic in composition, or consistently about 50 percent silica. So stratovolcanoes have higher silica contents than the lavas that come in, that are create shield volcanoes. As a result of that difference in silica composition, you get different minerals in each one. In stratovolcanoes, you have uh, many stickier minerals that develop chains due to the higher silica content as opposed to shield vulcan vulcanism where you have less sticky minerals, fewer chains of minerals due to the lower silica content. Uh, as a result, in terms of viscosity, which is a word we use to describe the ability to flow, stratovolcanoes have lavas that are more viscous or sticky, harder to flow. That makes them more explosive. Shield volcanoes uh, on the opposite side are less viscous, therefore less explosive. In terms of volatile content, the more evolved or higher silica content lavas of stratovolcanoes have more gases or volatiles in them. Um, they also have a harder time escaping uh, that viscous magma that also makes eruptions more explosive. There's less gases dissolved in the magmas at shield volcanoes because of the mafic composition of those magmas. In addition, um, there's less recharging of the magma chamber in a stratovolcano, so those magma chambers have a shorter lifespan, whereas at a shield volcano, there's more recharging, so lavas are continually recharging that existing magma chamber, and you have longer-lived uh, magma chambers in the shield volcano system. This also plays into the um, compositional differences, where the lavas or the magmas in a stratovolcano are able to evolve and get more stickier minerals, more silica rich, um, and 
therefore more explosive, whereas shield volcanoes constantly have an influx of mafic magma coming into their magma chambers. It keeps them runny and hot and um, uh, more like rivers than it is like they don't get as sticky and they keep that lower silica content. As a result of all this, stratovolcanoes have, um, when they when they do erupt, they erupt often in the form of pyroclastic flows. So a pyroclastic flow is a dense, fast moving flow that contains solidified lava pieces, volcanic ash, and hot gases. Pyroclastic flows are extremely hot. They burn everything in their path, trees, houses, everything, and may move at speeds as high as 200 meters per second. You would not get pyroclastic flows in a shield volcano. So because of all of these compositional differences, the eruptive style of the two different volcano types is very different. Stratovolcanoes are extremely explosive and dangerous, whereas the eruptive style of a shield volcano is calm and fluid. It more creates rivers of lava rather than explosions. Uh, as a result, the level of dangers to humans is quite different with the two different volcanoes. So if you want to go visit a volcano, definitely go visit a shield volcano in um, Hawaii or some other hot spot. Um, in terms of stratovolcanoes have periodic explosive eruptions that include the pyroclastic flows, whereas you can see here these Japanese hikers are escaping a pyroclastic flow in Japan. That's a subduction zone, and so those are stratovolcanoes in Japan. In Hawaii is the other picture over here. A scientist is able to walk right up to a lava flow. Um, it is um, manageable. You can walk right up to it. I've done some work in Hawaii. You can literally like take maybe like a cookie or something from your lunch and throw it into the lava and watch it like burn up before it ever hits it because it's so hot. Um, but it's much, much safer to get close to lava. And if I were ever, you know, visiting um, volcanoes, I definitely want to visit a shield volcano. I would never want to visit an eruption, an active eruption at a stratovolcano. Way too dangerous. So in summary, the composition of magma at a volcano is determined by its location of the volcano at a subduction zone where you have more silica-rich source, making more silica-rich um, magmas, versus mantle melting, which is creating more mafic or less silica-rich magmas. Okay, you find those at the mid-ocean ridge system or a hot spot. The composition of the magma then determines the viscosity, how easily it can flow, as well as the gas content, the volatiles. The viscosity and gas content then determine the eruption style of that volcano and whether or not it is hazardous. Stratovolcanoes are very hazardous, shield volcanoes less so. Thank you very much.